Question period at the Ontario Legislature has always been great theatre or a bloody embarrassment. It's a chance for the opposition to hold the government to account. We also hear that some teachers won't bring their students to see it anymore because the behaviour of honourable members isn't very honourable. Could we do something to make this traditional and central part of our democracy better? Let's find out. From Janet Ecker, the former Progressive Conservative Cabinet Minister. David Warner, former Speaker of the Legislature from 1990 to 95 and an NDP MPP from Scarborough Ellesmere. Dave Levac, the longest serving Speaker of the Legislature ever. He served from 2011 to 2018 and was a Liberal MPP from Brant. And Laura Stone, who now covers Queen's Park for the Globe and Mail, but also did time on Parliament Hill. And as I say that, it occurs to me, I make you sound like a prisoner yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, done, done, did time in a good way. Did in a good time. Way, did time. Uh, mm -hmm. First time for you here, first time for you here, first time for you here. Yes, sir. Great to have you all, Thanks particularly since us. it only took you about three hours to drive here from <laughs> Brantford yeah, this morning. Somebody ought to do something about that. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Right. I agree. Well, let's put you to work right away. <laughs> when you were running question period yes, as sir. the Speaker of the Legislature, what did you find to be the biggest problem? Um, the visceral comments that came out, comments that were done to kind of provoke and, and to be mean. Um, I did not tolerate them. Uh, I usually asked people to withdraw. When you ask somebody to withdraw, th there's no list of words that you have to say. It's actually by convention, but it's, if it elevates the anger, if it elevates the, the excitement, you can ask somebody to withdraw. And that's a signal to them that says, kind, calm down. Um, I also instituted a, uh, a program where I gave them a warning. If I gave them a warning, the next time I spoke to the person, I kicked them out. And you did do that? Yes, I did. Did you kick a lot of people out? Not a lot, because as soon as I said warning, a lot of these guys had questions. Hmm. And some of the ones that were provoking had questions to, to ask. So they didn't want to lose their questions, so they behaved. Gotcha. David Warner, when you were the speaker, admittedly back in the, uh, back yeah. In the day, yeah. what was the worst yeah. part for you? I think uh, similar to what uh, Speaker Levac mentions, uh, it was uh, on occasion inappropriate language. Um, sometimes uh, groups of, of members, I mean, I recall one day where the entire Liberal caucus um, decided to walk out because they, for whatever reason, but they all walked out and they, they assumed then that everything would come to a standstill and which it didn't, I thought, well, it gives the conservatives now more opportunity to ask questions. So they, apparently they went, the liberals went out into the lobby. They watched it on TV, realized the question period was continuing and sheepishly all came back. <laughs> and I, I, I had, prior to them actually walking out, I'd stood for seven minutes and- uh, Trying to get order. Yeah. Just, That's gotta I be stood a there. record. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Right. So. And I only had to do that once. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then they got the message, yeah. you know. Um, but it was, and I think at, at, the, at the base of it all, and, and, and I think today especially, is not having respect for another parliamentarian. Okay, we're going to follow up on that and as we go along. You, you would have experienced it, I'm going by memory here, at first as a backbencher, a government backbencher, and then as a cabinet <coughs> minister. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for you, what was the question period experience like? Well, I used to actually sort of enjoy question period, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were days it wasn't as much fun. But uh, it, it's kind of the, the, you know, the cut and the thrust. And, and um, for me, it was, you know, can you, can you sort of bat them out of the park if they're sort of throwing something at you sort of thing? So I used to find it sort of, Interesting, stimulating, challenging, uh, a little bit of fun, uh, but also an opportunity to uh, to get your what you think your message is across. Did you find it useful? Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, now, I mean, things have changed a lot since. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I was there. Um, but 20, um, twenty-four years since you were first elected. Is it really? Yeah. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> thank you for thank you for reminding me about that. It doesn't feel that long. Um, but you know, I used to be surprised how many people actually watched. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the media still takes clips and things like that off uh, off what you say in the house. Um, but. Um, um, it was also too, I mean, it's a temperature gauge about where an issue is and how an issue is playing. And it's also, frankly, a really major accountability. Like if you can't stand up and explain what your government is doing or defend what your government is doing in that venue, 
then you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. And hmm. so for hmm. me, it's an accountability mechanism hmm. that, like, you know, American politicians just have no idea. Um, you know, walking through the scrum, because you know, not, it's not only a question period itself, you have to usually, you know, walk through a scrum going in or going out with the media there. And it really is a, a daily accountability well, exercise. Should we hear from the enemies Absolutely. of the people right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. As, we are uh, for the people. Uh, for the people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> As you watch it, what yeah. do you think prevents question period from being a more useful exercise than it is? Well, I, I'm like Janet. I, ac I actually enjoy watching question period generally. I, I like the political theater. I like watching politicians on their feet and, and seeing what they can come up with and how they respond. Now, I think the, some of the problems that are occurring right now is, is what's happening at Queen's Park, especially, it's often described as a toxic atmosphere. Mm. And we talked about how personal um, some of the comments and some of the insults have become. I mean, you look at some of the vitriol that was directed at Kathleen Wynne, for instance, and that still is, um, even though she occupies just that one corner seat uh, of the legislature. She gets booed. She does, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's calmed down a bit since the since the election, but it does seem there's this air of the constant campaign that's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's not about governing or governance, it's about showing up your opponent. And that, and that goes, you know, both to the opposition and the government. So there is this toxicity that's happening. Um, as well, you know, the issue, you know, we always talk about it's not question period, it, uh, sorry, it's question period, not answer, answer period. period. Not, not that's answer period. period. Um, yeah. But I think just the way that, that it, it goes completely off topic, that, that that some of the leaders or the, the MPPs are able to just completely dismiss the substance of a question and move on to talking points. And I, I bring up the example of recently when the Premier Ford was asked about abortion, for instance, and he directed that question to Energy Minister Greg Rickford, who talked about the carbon tax. And that was just a, a total missed opportunity for the government to answer what is a serious question that people in Ontario and across the country want to hear an actual answer to. Well, full disclosure here, there was, and I think I actually I, I saw the speech that uh, Henry Jasek from McMaster University gave to your organization, mm -hmm. the Association of Former Parliamentarians of Ontario, and he put out, it's not quite a Dave Letterman top 10 list, but it's a, I think, top 8 list of a bunch of ideas that he would suggest could make question period better. So we're going to go through some of them right here, and why don't we start by, watch the monitors here, because Sheldon, here's one thing Henry Jasek would love to get rid of. Roll it, please. We're lowering taxes on business, lowering taxes Response. on residents, making sure we lower heating costs, gas costs. That's being responsible. Socialism does not work. This is a government that will continue to protect what matters most, and I will have no part of listening to the fear-mongering of the member opposite. <laughs> Speaker, you know what? It takes a lot of work. Government House Leader, come to order. Government House Leader, come to order. Will the Premier, side come to order. Will the premier stop fundraising for his leadership campaign and funneling it into Conservative Party coffers? Yes or no? Clock. The government side has to come to order. Just because you're on that end of the chamber, you can't shout down the member who's got the floor. Now, that's Ted Arnott, who's the current speaker, and for him, that's a temper tantrum, right? You know, he's <laughs> yeah, a pretty, yeah, yeah. pretty mild-mannered yeah. guy, and he was upset there. Uh, okay, what does Henry Jasek want to end here? He wants to end the constant standing ovations, the constant table-thumping, the constant yes. applause, the constant... All of that constant stuff. Here, here. You agree. <laughs> you agree. Get rid of all that? A absolutely, yeah. because two things are really important. I'll give you an example of what happened. Quebec had an all-party meeting with the speaker. The speaker's a friend of mine, and he said, I'm going to try this. They voted themselves to stop doing the clapping and the, and the, and, and the desk thumping. They didn't do it. They got more questions. Yeah, you get, yeah, yeah. You get more yeah. questions. And then yeah. the speaker doesn't have to yeah. stop the clock to punish. A, a, yeah. it, it doesn't make sense to me. It yeah. really doesn't. Yeah. Now, if there is a very important point that's made on behalf of Ontario or something worldwide happens, an applause for somebody that does something good, no problem. But this robotic... This robotic, I got to stand and applaud, no matter what, no matter who says it. I even caught people behind the dais telling everybody to stand up and yeah. applaud. Yeah. They had to be told to do it. Really? So get rid of it. Yeah. They, were, they were actually orchestrating they were the chore choreography. Yeah. Hmm. Get now, rid of it. Earlier days, a standing ovation was for Nelson Mandela. Hmm. Uh, it was for Bishop, Archbishop Tutu. It was on the evening of the budget presentation. Uh, and lastly, 
when uh, a member w had announced that he or she was retiring. So a rare special occasion. Rare yes. yeah. special yeah. occasion. Makes sense. It was supposed yeah. to mean something. Yes, yeah. yes. It, yeah. it, it, that's yeah. right. It means nothing now. No, it that's cheapens that's the moment now yeah. because it happens so frequently. Yeah. But I don't necessarily mind the, the noise in the chamber. You know, it, it's a passionate profession, politics is, you know, it's a, and, and question period is inherently partisan. I mean, it's one side asking questions of another. So I don't, I don't necessarily mind it, but I do agree that it's just, it's happening too frequently and it is, it's, it's a robotic exercise now and it doesn't mean anything because it's happening so much. Well, and I think one of the, the problems um, these days, I mean, there's an argument about whether bring it, when they brought television into the, into the chamber, whether that did it. And I think, 1985. Yeah. And I think that's contributed some, some to the, the show. Um, secondly, I think the fact that, I mean, people used to dump on when we used to have evening sittings, uh, but what would happen uh, is that, you know, members would go for dinner, sometimes like across the, the, the aisle kind of thing. So there was a little more camaraderie, even yeah. though there was the partisanship yeah. very, very yeah. much. But I think the other thing that actually makes a big difference is if, if you've been in the opposition and then you're in government, or you're in the government and then you're in the opposition, you have a broader understanding of the circumstances, if I can put it that way. <laughs> yeah. And I can remember sitting there, and again, I was not uh, an elected member in opposition, but I worked for, for Premier Davis and, and, and in the government when uh, we were in government. Um, and uh, I said to uh, my, one of my seat colleagues the first year we were elected, and she was newly elected, and like, you know, you know like, a, like a true newbie, you know, we're the true believers, very right? You won't, yeah, oh, very absolutely. And the opposition was doing something. Uh, I don't know what they were, you know, uh, stonewalling or doing something that was making us all a little irritated. And, and she was like righteous indignation. And I can remember saying, oh, come on, Barb. I said, you know, I said, if we were sitting across the way, we'd be doing the same thing. We would not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I sort of very wisely shut up, right? But, but there's a, there really is, I mean, you watch your party do something the other party did or vice versa, mm. right? So, And there's so many newbies there now mm -hmm. that I think it takes away from some of the understanding. Well, Dave Levac, tell me this. I remember being on an elevator ride after question period one day, not too long ago, and it was a particularly raucous day. And I said to the people, none of whom I knew in the elevator, boy, what'd you think of that? Expecting the response to be, yeah, that was pretty disgusting behavior. And to a person, they said, loved the energy. That was very entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between the energy and the, the heckling that can be <laughs> exciting and that can be actually humorous, because I, I love yeah, humorous Yeah, people heckling. are being witty. I, I mean, love yeah. humorous yeah, absolutely. heckling. And that's a place I, to do I would it. laugh in the chair, yeah, yeah, because it was a good one, right? They don't do it anymore. But I think yeah. there's Very a difference between that energy hmm. and, and the visceral comments, because I yeah. think we need to elevate that, that discussion instead of lower it. So if you kind of go to the top, how, how can you be visceral and go to the top? You can still be loud. Mm -hmm. You can still be mm -hmm. funny in the heckle. Uh, heckling's been around since it was invented, oh, yeah. for Pete's yes. sake. Yeah. They used to take their swords out and, sh and take shots at That's each other That's why with we swords. have the two swords. Like, the, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so the, the, the reality is I don't have a problem with the heckling. It's not school. It's not the workforce outside yeah. in somebody's office. It's different. It's different. Right. However, that's the piece we're talking about. The different piece that we're talking about is... Does it have to be visceral? Does it have to be nasty? Does it have to be mean? And quite frankly, I think the objective has changed from good governance to I got to get you looking bad so that I can look good so they elect me. And I've got to embarrass you so I can get you unelected. As opposed to the good governance side. Janet's point earlier is the purpose of question period. Hold the government it, it, it's to, to account. hold the government to yeah, account. Yeah. Okay, to that end, let's put up Henry Jasek's uh, second suggestion here. Uh, he would like to see an end to this, Sheldon, if you would. The Ford government has repeatedly claimed that no Ontarian will have to pay out of pocket for essential health services and that OHIP coverage will be there for people with serious medical needs. Does the Premier stand by this uh, commitment? The question is to the Premier. Minister of Health. So does the Premier believe that cutting all elective courses will improve learning outcomes for students in Brampton and across the Peel region? Questions to the Premier. Minister of Education. So why did he cut a billion dollars from children, community and social services? Questions to the Premier. Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. So why is this government not thinking before they act? Questions to the Premier. Minister of Health. Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Now, just for the record here, we're not picking on Premier Ford. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he happens to be in power right now and all our clips are from, uh, from his time. 
Laura, all premiers do this. They all have done this. Yep. Should it be banned? I don't know about that, to be mm -hmm. honest. I mean, the premier um, isn't responsible. I guess the premier is responsible for what happens in his government, but is he responsible for every detail and a decision that is made? Then I think if he is, if if the premier, he or she, would be the one to answer all the questions, does that take away ministerial independence or ministerial mm -hmm. decision making? Right. Um, you know, I, I think it depends on the context. If 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 he's passing off, he or she is passing off every single question to someone else. I mean, he does have to take responsibility. But I think at sometimes, yes, the Minister of Health may have more details about that or worked mm -hmm. on that file mm -hmm. more closely. And I don't think it's necessarily inappropriate for that person to be answering. I think a good approach to this would be to have, as they do in the UK, um, a, a Prime Minister's Day and here a Premier's Day, <laughs> so that once, once a week, the, it's the Premier who's going to be answering questions. And in Ottawa as well. They, they, yeah, yeah, they did suggest yeah. that as well. And I, yeah. and I did yeah. think that yeah. that would help. Uh, Laura's right. I mean, I, you can't expect the Premier to know everything about everything. But uh, uh, quite frankly, there was a Premier, Mr. Davis, who did know just about yeah, everything did. about everything. <laughs> and even if he didn't, he could and, still answer the question. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Still, oh, yeah, he was uh, uh, Although sometimes when he finished sat down, you weren't sure, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> I've, listen, I've gone through <laughs> transcripts of what he yeah. said and yeah. still, still not, still didn't know what he said. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think there's a way to do that. I mean, there's a way to do it. I, I think passing it off to a minister is, is a good thing because mm -hmm. you're supposed to get even more details and that's yeah. a good way to get them accountable. As long as the question is, is, is the past yeah, yeah, that's right, is not yeah. to the person. I, I've seen him do it a few times, and I've seen other people, other premiers do it. They pass it on to a person had nothing to yes. do with the question, yeah, yeah. just to yeah. simply to, to bark out the regular answer. Yeah. So the premier could answer the first question, yeah, and then, and and then, then pass it to then him pass in the it. next. Yeah, that's right. uh, Kathleen did that a lot. Yeah. She, yeah. she would answer yeah. the first one to show I know my I know yeah. my portfolio, yeah. Yeah. and now I'm going to give the more detailed answer to the minister of health to, right. to repeat. Yeah. So there's a way to yeah. do that without it being. Yeah. Uh, obtuse. Well, and I think yes. the other thing that's important is that be as politics becomes more and more focused on the, the Prime Minister or the Premier, mm. um, which when things are going well for your government, that's a good thing. Um, when it's not, it's a very bad thing. Um, as our Prime Minister is discovering, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view. Um, so it, 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 I think, helps balance that, you know? So it's not just the Premier. I mean, you're right, the, the, the Premier and the Prime Minister have to be accountable, but at the end of the day, so does the Minister, because the mm -hmm. Minister is part of the team, and I think you need to portray that. Presently, <laughs> the rules allow for that. I mean, that, that is yes, part, yeah. of, and that, I think that part of the book. Yeah. I think that and should continue. Should, and it should continue, but there's a way in which you can do it that brings sense to why do you pass the That's question. That's right. More, and, and, yeah, I'm sorry, and, 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 and isn't the tradition usually, you know, the premier or the prime minister would answer, you know, the, the first several questions, you know, from the leader well, of the opposition. Well, the there's the three, the, yeah, yeah, the leader. And then as, yeah. as the yeah. question period goes on, I yeah. mean, they'll pass it to... to yeah. yeah. While, while you've got the floor, John Burko, uh, the speaker mm -hmm. at Westminster in the United Kingdom, he actually, on occasion, when a minister gets up and answers a question that is not at all, and you just gave a, an example of this, that is not at all responsive to the question that has been asked, He'll give them H-E double hockey sticks and he'll <laughs> force them to go back and, mm -hmm. and say that answer was not at all responsive. You've got to take another shot at that. And I agree with that. I, think. Get, I, yeah. I, I would like to see the speaker take a more activist approach and maybe you two could speak to yeah, some of the constraints We, we don't that. have the rules. Exactly. You can do that right no, now. No. UK can do it. Um, we yeah, can't. I, mean, yeah. I think there has to be yeah. some respect for the question and the legislature. And it does. It, it, the, the answer should be on topic. I absolutely agree that that mm. should be happening. But the challenge when you do that, and I, I agree sometimes it, it's quite egregious what a minister or a Premier, Prime Minister might do in terms of not answering the question. Um, uh, you know, you should have some passing acquaintance with the subject subject matter, I think. But for a speaker to, to wade into that gets very, very risky because that means you're making a judgment that yep. people will see as partisan. Um, uh, and so, and, and, and yet that's dangerous territory to tread hmm. on, I think. Unless you change the rules. And Dave's if right. If you it's do, not, oh, yeah. The, the rules don't really allow the speaker to intervene in the way you're yeah, describing, yeah. Uh, because as Jenna says, it, it then creates a, a potential problem for the speakers. Well, that's what I yeah. think that's what they've done, and that's what Janet's <coughs> talking about. And I think the rule that we changed 
that that's a rule change for our perspective than than yeah. it was in England because we could have adopted all of the rules. We didn't. Mm -hmm. We we looked at that one and said maybe we can keep the speaker out of this and elevate the speaker away from the partisanship as mm -hmm. much as we can. Mm -hmm. The reality of the question it becomes an obvious thing when when he yeah. passes it to a minister of the environment to give a speech on carbon tax when it was a health care question, yeah. I think the speaker should say, wait a minute, yeah. go yeah. to the minister well, of... To, yeah. to yeah. that end. Yeah. Like, to I that think end. that's too crazy. Okay, Henry Jasek here has another idea, it, it, which also would give the speaker more power. And, and let me just set this up, because people who don't watch Question Period, the leader of the opposition gets the first question and then two supplementaries. Yes. Yeah. And I think the leader of the opposition gets then a second question and yep. two yes. supplementaries. Yeah. And then there's kind of a rotation. Government backbenchers yeah. get questions. The independent, liberal, green, whatever, independents, they get a question. Anyway, there's a whole choreography to the thing. J6 says, let's break up the rotation. After 40 minutes, all bets are off. Let the speaker pick whoever he or she wants to ask a question. <laughs> Those who have misbehaved, he or she, as speaker, will ignore. Those who, you know, have behaved, the speaker will identify and give them a chance to ask a question. What do we think of that idea? I, th I think uh, I, I'd move back a little bit. I think question period is too long. Yes. And I, I it's think too it's long. Been, yes. yeah. It's an hour. I, yes. I make it longest for, in the 45 yeah, Commonwealth. Yes, yeah. It used I to be shorter. Yeah. Longest yeah. in what the I would Commonwealth. Yeah. It's 45, 45. Yeah. 45 minutes and 45 seconds to ask a question and, and make a reply. Hmm. 45 seconds up, you, you're down. And that's, uh, I, I think that would help. You could, yes, I think limiting the leaders to one question each and plus one supplementary and then opening. The big problem I found, and I suspect it was the same for Dave, was how few backbench members from all parties get an opportunity to ask a question. The leaders. All leaders. Yeah. Hog yeah. most of the limelight, yeah. don't yeah. they? And, yeah. and whereas critics, especially major portfolios like health and education, they got big questions to, to ask and they rarely get an opportunity to ask them. Yeah, each and party has a selection committee. You actually have to pitch your question right, yeah. to that selection committee made up of either the house leader or the premier's office or whomever. Mm -hmm. And they say, you can ask that question, but today we're going to focus on the environment. Hmm. Yeah. And so that maybe the premier is the premier's going to get questions from the party on the environment. And uh, yeah. that, 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 that's a common practice. Yeah. But the problem lies in, in not in the, the number of questions there are. It's the time used. So you get rid of yeah. clapping, you get rid of applause, you get yeah. rid of the, you put these things together, and then you probably yeah. diminish that temperature and then you get into actually a asking questions and getting answers. But I think, I think that would be a fun exercise in empowering the back bench, um, because right now it does seem like there's a stigma or something, I don't know if that's the right word, but for backbenchers to hold the government to account, which is actually their role. And one of the most tedious elements, and maybe we'll get to it, of question period now are what we call the lobbed questions. Okay, we're going to do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> are you anticipating? And, that so, was, that's a great segue. I okay. I want to go there. Perfect. I want to go there because, <laughs> yes, and we have some clips of this. There are, in the rotation, government backbenchers who do get up and do stuff like this, if you would, Sheldon. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> and the Premier, please highlight the policies our government has introduced to provide relief for the people of Ontario. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank our all-star MPP from Etobicoke Centre, absolute champion. My question is for the minister who builds up success, the Minister of Infrastructure. Can the minister please tell us about this great project and how this investment will not just grow the economy but help the environment? Thank you to the member from Barry Innisville for that excellent question. Can the minister further ex expand on what our government is doing to incentivize the building of more rental units? And I want to thank the, the honourable member for uh, that question and those great points. Dave Levac, while those clips were running, you, would, you just said, I would ban all of that. Can you? No. <laughs> he didn't say <laughs> but, ban it. But he just said individually he would not allow. I would not allow yeah. certain things to be said. Yeah. The fantastic member from or the most right. exceptional <laughs> minister ever to yeah. ever <laughs> grace legislature. Yeah. Yeah. Get to the question. Number one, I wouldn't ban it outright because I was a backbencher and I had some important questions asked about my riding. I would ban the, the loftball questions. The yeah. softball questions are absolutely insulting. Minister, you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Could you please tell us why? Yeah. Like, I mean, that is absolutely insulting. What is the insulting. nature of your genius, Yeah, minister. what is the nature of your genius? Yeah. 
what, what I think we should do is have the capacity to say the questions are going to be based on holding the government accountable. Even if I'm in the government, I still had questions about my writing. Like, my biggest one was Brownfields. I asked tough questions yeah. about Brownfields, so much so that Dalton told me to tell the minister I'm taking him to a late show because yeah. I didn't like yeah. his answer. You, should, you yeah. should explain what that means. Yeah. Well, a late show means that if I'm not satisfied, I can issue a paper to the speaker that says uh, I'm not satisfied with his answer, <coughs> and I want five minutes after the House sits, like at, at the end of the sitting, I want five minutes to tell him why I want an answer, and he's got five minutes to tell me. But that rule... Government backbencher holding his or her own government to account is a completely lost art nowadays. Absolutely. No one does it anymore. Yeah, but, part, but part of the issue now is the makeup of the legislature in Ontario yeah. because the Liberals don't have official party status. Yeah. So that allows for more, from my understanding, more government. More yeah, government right. yeah. That, that yeah. allows yeah. for more yeah. backbench questions. So that's just, you know, yeah. that's just a result of, of how the election came about. But I've seen instances where um, Mike Schreiner, for instance, the Green Party leader, will stand up and ask for unanimous consent to ask a question on behalf of one of the other independence and it's denied the the the, yes. the government you know well, they, they shout, there's a rotation there is there's a, a rotation there's a there, calculation yeah, you get there, to there is but he's yeah. asking but he's doing something, something smart on the, on he's doing something of, smart of another yeah. member yeah. and they won't that, let him yeah, do yeah that's a smart action because what he's doing is he's telling the rest of the house we have some other questions that we really want to ask why don't you let us ask it? Yeah. So it actually embarrasses yeah. the government for mm -hmm. being afraid yeah. to answer a question. The second thing that I would do in that circumstance was I, I, I said that if we got to the point where we could say um, that is an accountable question, you must give an answer. Well, that goes back to the, the British way they mm -hmm. do it. And it goes back to the idea that the speaker has way more power than the speakers here in Ontario and Canada yeah. have. Yeah. Well, Janet, were you ever embarrassed when you were a cabinet minister and a backbencher from your own party got up and asked you a softball question that was kind of well, know, we ridiculous? Well, we used to... Um, no, there was nothing that was ever ridiculous, actually. I mean, they were usually... Um, um, uh, issues that you wanted to talk about in the house, so it policy. was something you wanted them. You wanted yeah. somebody to ask you a question so on it. It's policy oriented. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, I mean, everybody used to have some fun. <laughs> but one of the things that I think the current government, um, you know, could be doing with the backbench question, is that because one of the challenges for majority governments is when you've got a major caucus, a large caucus, <laughs> is after a year or two, it gets a little challenging to keep everybody sort of on on side, as it were, disciplined, whatever word you want to use. So this is a bone they talk. Well, them. well, it's it's not a bone. It's like if you've got a hot issue and you're writing, as Dave that, that, said, that's where you get it. You stand up, and now yeah. you you let the minister know you're going to ask the question, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Opposition will sometimes, at least they used to. They probably don't do that very much anymore. But they used to let sometimes a minister know that you were going to have gonna a, question, a particular yeah. kind of question. Yeah. Um, so you would you would stand up and say, Minister, you know, I mean, there's this real problem in my writing. You know, what are you going to do about it? Um, and you get an answer. So for the backbencher, you're seen to be defending your your turf, defending your constituents. You've got something Perfect. you put in your newsletter. You got, you know. Yeah. So they could be doing that more. I think would, which would help with the backbench, and it also helps with the perception of the government. David Warner. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things here. First of all, the art of asking questions, mm -hmm. but secondly, the understanding about how you can actually make things happen. So, for example. Mm -hmm. There was a time when a government minister would ask a member of the opposition uh, that's right. to yes. ask yeah. a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've done that. And yeah. In one particular case mm -hmm. I remember so well, the minister wanted to get a major policy through cabinet and was having trouble. Yeah. And yeah. said, if you ask me a question <laughs> about this, then I'll have I'll be See, easier I told you. For it was me an to issue. Money, yeah, that's right. right? Yeah, yeah. And um <laughs> And that happens more than we think. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. So it does. There is, there's some You're a smart minister, useful, yeah. <laughs> valuable things. I, I, this clip that you showed, it, it's really you know, disturbing. In a couple of cases, I remember when I was speaker, uh, a member was asking one of these lob questions, and I said, you know, that's a, that could be a ministerial statement. Yeah. So mm -hmm. no question, the minister can make a statement. Yeah, and I, because mm -hmm. we have a certain set time for that, which doesn't take time away from the opposition. That's, That's the point right. Of that. That's right, right. Yeah. and it yeah. doesn't take time out of question period. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to know under what conditions, you folks, when you had the job, and the current guy who has the job, under what conditions you should be allowed to throw someone out. 
<laughs> you got any views oh, on this? Me. I want to hear. I want to hear. I would never. I know, but I want to hear what you have to say um, first, and then have them react to it. <laughs> Do you think more people ought to well, be thrown out of this legislature for bad behavior? <sighs> I, I think the standard should be pretty high. I mean, I'm just trying to think back from examples that I've seen, and it was before I arrived at Queens Park. But when when the NDP caused a ruckus over the over the the council, um, the changes to Toronto City Council. I mean, they did that knowing that they were going to be kicked out and they were doing that to prove a point. Um, you know, federally, I think I think you really do have to kick up a stir or kick up a ruckus in order um, to be removed. I don't know I, I don't know what purpose that would serve. I guess, I guess it would be serve as a warning to people to, to, to better behave, but I still think you it has to be pretty egregious before you're actually removed from the legislature. Well, let me give the example, David Warner. I hear yeah. all the time, I listen to Question Period every day, I... I hear people all the time using what they would call unparliamentary language. They call somebody a liar. They mm -hmm. say, right. you know, you've right. misled the House, this kind yeah. of thing. And as long as you take the comment back, you're okay to stay there. <clears throat> what if you had a rule that said, you know what, if you call somebody a liar, you're out. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think, I always said that I, I never threw anybody out of the House. They managed to remove themselves <laughs> because of their behavior. Um, I think that... Uh, what might be more helpful is to uh, stop what's going, stop the proceeding, and ask the member to apologize to the house. Because mm -hmm. when you say something that's demeaning of another member, you are also demeaning the institution of parliament. Mm -hmm. And so, it's a moment to reflect on what you have just said which is not appropriate, and apologize to the House. That would put a bit of an embarrassing spotlight on them, wouldn't it? That might do yeah. something. It, it would, and yeah. because yeah. when it's too easy, I saw, uh, well, I, the, I saw the Premier just say, um, I withdraw and sit down, I withdraw. And we went, th he went through that a number of times. There was at no point, and the Speaker, I, I felt, didn't, feel it's uh, embarrassing to have to confront the premier of the day. And uh, I don't know, the first time I told Premier Ray to sit down, I, I felt a little badly about it. He's the premier of the province, you know. But I told him to sit down. And I, and I, I think if, if the premier had, instead of just saying I withdraw, said, I apologize to the House for my inappropriate remarks. Interesting. Dave Levesque, what I, do you think of that? I've had, I've had that happen on several occasions. Um, I, as I said earlier, I designed a warning system mm -hmm. where that if you got the second <coughs> warning, no matter what it was for, you're out. Uh, I warned the Premier once. Which uh, Premier? Premier Wynn. Mm -hmm. uh, I warned the leaders. I threw a, a few of them out, and some of them got past the warning, and I threw them out. Here's a real trick. Let's try this. If you get kicked out, you lose a day's pay. Ooh. <laughs> what a neat idea. Change the rule. What a neat idea. NHL changed their rules because the, the, the team used to pay all the fines of all the players. Oh, yeah. They switched it. If, you, if, if you're a hockey player and you get a, a game misconduct and get penalized, pay it fine. pays out of your pocket. That went down. Yeah. Focuses yeah. the mind a little more, doesn't yeah. it? Take a day's pay off them if they get kicked yeah. out. Huh. Yeah. Watch how fast money speaks. What and about I'm, the, I'm not being tongue in cheek. I'm no, being no, serious. I get it. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's yeah. one way in which yeah, you like can that. start to get the people to get motivated yeah. to say, ah, yeah. "Oh, I'm going to lose a day's pay." Do you think, Janet, we should still have a situation where somebody can be on the floor of the legislature and libel and slander and say awful things about somebody, and then say, "I withdraw, sit down," mm, and it's no. as if it never happened? Do we have to put some new rules in place well, around that? Well, I think it's worth talking about because, because I think, as David said, that the tone of the of the legislature and the comments that are being made by everybody um, are getting to be mean. Yes. I mean, they're not witty, they're not yeah. clever, they're yeah. not m helping either side on their message. They're just they're yeah. just personally demeaning, yep. nasty things. Yeah. So I think there needs to be it, some way to, to try and control that. I, I would take yours and go one step even yeah. further by simply saying that uh, the speaker does have authority to, to do that. So that instead of withdrawing, if he does it the first time or she does it the first time, you might let him get away with it. Because it could have been emotional. It could have been in the heat yeah, of the moment. If true. they say yeah. it do it a second yeah. time, say it again and I'm throwing you out. Mm. I think, yeah. I think yeah. shame is a powerful tool Indeed. as well. It, and it I, works. And I yeah. think back to Ottawa, Paul Calandra, who, who was a parliamentary secretary, who is now a, an MPP here in Ontario. Um, you know, he, he was giving... Um, 
ridiculous answers to to NDP questions where he was they were asking about the position uh, the government's position on um, Iraq and he was uh, he was attacking the NDP's position on Iran like it was just it was completely unrelated and he was using it as a partisan attack he got a lot of backlash for that and a couple of days later he stood in the house and gave a very famous tearful apology um, you know just saying that he took full responsibility for how he acted but that that wasn't a heat of the moment response that was a planned response that he game and gave and the backlash was so strong against him that I think he I, I really think that that he took that to heart and I, I think that he changed mm -hmm. his behavior based on that and I've talked to him about that since and and he's not a repeat offender certainly not in Ontario mm -hmm. um well he is a back well parliamentary assistant now but, but, he, um, but he hasn't done that again no he hasn't done no. that again yeah. so I, I do think kind of like backlash from the public goes a long way as well there's your there's part of your answer right there mm -hmm. I threatened at one time with my tongue deeply in my cheek and said that I'm going to get broadcast to, to focus in on the serial hecklers and make me a tape and then I'm going to mail it to their mother. <laughs> so, but oh, if you give it, to, yeah. get, give it to the press in their yeah. writing, because yeah. these people don't behave like this in their writings. Yeah. Yeah. I right. guarantee it. Yes. And if they do, God bless, if okay. that's what the yeah. people want. Here's what I have to do now. I've always wanted to do this with a couple of speakers at the table. <laughs> order, order. <laughs> We're done. We're out of time. I want to thank everybody for coming from near and far yeah. to join us here on TVO tonight for a very nice conversation. Janet Ecker, David Warner, Dave Levac, Laura Stone. Great to have you all at TVO tonight. Thanks for Thank this. Thank you so much. Thank you. We want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, for more on the ins and outs of question period, we invite you to listen to... The On Poly Podcast, hosted by John Michael McGrath and yours truly. John Michael takes a terrific deep dive into everything you've always wanted to know about Question Period, but we're afraid to ask. So download the On Poly Podcast from wherever you normally get your podcasts or from our own website, tvo.org slash programs slash On Poly. The Agenda with Steve Bacon is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.